Today's episode is brought to you by RankUpAndLead.com. It's a free resource that I created because I've noticed there are five common mistakes that I see that leaders make. And so if you want to learn those five mistakes and how to avoid them so you can grow your team much faster, make sure to check out that free resource. Today's episode is very special to me because years ago as I was sitting in an audience and I was trying to figure out like, what do I do to go out and build my brand? How do I build authority when I really don't feel like I have anything that would allow me to do that? I don't have the tools. I don't have the skills. I don't have the know-how. But there was a speaker on stage that started talking about those things. And so as she started to share with us tips and techniques and strategies of things that I could implement and things that I knew that I actually could do, I got really excited. And so when we left that event, I reached out to this person and I hired her to sit down with me, do a VIP day and help me figure out what I needed to do, a plan, a strategy to go out and build my brand and authority online. And what happened after that was mind blowing for me coming from a small town, having no experience in social media, no experience when it comes to digital marketing. And she showed me some very simple things to do that I implemented immediately. And yes, I was not great. Okay. Actually, I was pretty bad, um, but I got a little bit better every single day. And I continued to follow the plan that she gave me that eventually led me to having hundreds of thousands of people, you know, online uh, that eventually allowed me to have people reaching out to me on a daily and weekly basis going, hey, look, I want to work with you, you know, because business is about working with people that you know, like, and trust. And in a such a busy world today, there's so many distractions and that can take a long time. But if you do the right things online, you can shorten that curve and get to where you want to be a lot sooner than later. Today's guest is Kim Garst, who is one of the most retweeted people among digital marketers. She was one of the top 10 social media influencers in Forbes magazine. She has built not one, not two, but seven seven-figure online businesses. So if you if you built one seven-figure business, you may go, hey, maybe they got lucky. Two, Wow, maybe they know what they're doing. But to build seven, seven-figure online businesses, I would say that she knows exactly what to do. And the reason that she's able to do that or one of the, the benefits of doing that is now she's able to go out and help other people do the same thing. And so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get myself out of the way. I'm going to bring on not only is she a best-selling author, one of the top in Forbes, seven, seven figure online businesses, but she's also become a great friend. And so let me go ahead and introduce you to Kim Garst. All right. So Kim, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time to share with our audience, you know, some of the tips when it comes to building your, your authority, building your brand online. And so first of all, thanks for joining. And I would love for you to share with people, you know, why you believe that is so important in today's uh, world when it comes to doing business and making an impact. Oh, thank you first for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I think um, you said it, uh, you know, where today we are in a very crowded marketplace and it's getting worse each and every day, you know, where standing out is getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And I, I feel like that the necessity um, as a part of that, you know, what we just talked about, everything is so crazy and busy these days trying to get grab people's attention is that we have to show up and stand out in, in our own uniqueness, you know? And I, I think that a lot of times people struggle with that process. They're like, they watch what other people are doing and they try to do the same thing because it's working for them. But if you take a peek at anybody that is successful uh, using social media or the online space to attract their person to them, they show up and they are authentic, they're transparent, and they're real. They let their personality flow. And I think that's a critical piece. That's what it ultimately stops the scroll uh, and, can, and, and helps people ultimately connect with you in a real human-to-human -human way. If they get nothing else from this episode, it's being real, being authentic. You know, so many people, they jump on and they, they find someone that they look up to and that appeals to them. And then what they try to do is be that person. But in reality, you know, I've seen people get on, try to be polished, try to speak like they don't normally speak, say things they don't normally say. And it's a big flop. 
But yeah. then I've seen people, you know, get on social media and whether it was a live or what, maybe it's a vulnerable post and they go, Hey, listen, to be honest with you, like I'm scared to death right now. You know, I'm shaking. You can't see me shaking, but I'm shaking, mm -hmm. but I just believe in what I'm doing. And I wanted to share with the people that I know, love and care about and the love that comes to those people is like nothing else because they were real authentic and that person watching or on the other side of the screen, they have respect for them. So I think that being authentic and real, no matter what you do, that is a great tip. And another thing that, that Kim, you said is, you know, in a busy world and it's getting busier, there's so many distractions, but we are still so fortunate because back in the day, you know, we had to go out and, you know, you're meeting people in person mm -hmm. or whether you're going to a hotel room, you have travel. And a lot of times we have that comparitis. You know, I look at a Kim Garst and going, oh my gosh, you got a million plus people following you. And my posts don't have hundreds of likes like yours. When in reality, even if there's no likes, you know, people saw it five or 10 people. That's like having a hotel room back in the day, doing all the setup, signing the contract, paying for the room, inviting 20, 30, 50 people in order to have five show up. So sometimes I think we take that for granted, but it is definitely a blessing to have the ability with technology to be able to connect and impact people all over the world. Absolutely. You know, speaking of, you know, what used to work and what no longer works, that's, it's very difficult to get, you know, a bunch of people to come to a home party, you know, which has been the traditional way or rent the hotel room or some of those things. Again, the opportunity to connect, it's not just necessarily about attracting, although that's a piece of it, but it's really about attraction. That's where you stop having to work so hard <laughs> when you can actually, your vibe attracts your tribe. So if you show up authentically, um, it's so much easier to actually tr attract people to you so that you don't have to hustle so hard, you know, um, but you do have to show up. You have to show up consistently. You have to create the content so that people have that uh, uh, connection point. It's like if there's no hotel room, they can't come. Right. If there's no content, you're not going to attract anybody. Uh, so it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? I'm going to tell you, it's the content, okay? <laughs> yeah, and so it used to take so long to build that know, like, and trust factor. You know, people want to do business with they with people they know, they like, and they trust. And now with social media, even if you're not putting up a business post, when you say show up, okay, you mean show up just every day with your your life, right? I mean, is that what you're talking yes. about when you say just show up? So if if you are just starting and you're like, my gosh, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what I should share. Um, life is a real amazing first start because we all live. We all eat dinner, uh, breakfast. We all have pets. We all have kids. Well, you know what I'm saying? The the relatable moments in our lives are, are the first touch point, the first connection. In fact, people will connect with you around uh, relatable content, relatable things in your life way before they connect around whatever product or service you're ultimately pushing. You know, if you have a great product and that's all you talk about, you are going to turn away more people than, than you're going to attract. So show up authentically with your life uh, first. It, that's the easiest way to show up because it's your life. Now, that said, I get a lot of pushback from people sometimes with this. They're like, well, my life is boring. I, I don't like, I don't even know if I, I can do that or that feels weird. Like, but you know, my husband used to say, I would post a picture of um, our, you know, we went out to dinner and I'd post a picture of it. Right. And you know, hundreds of people would engage with that. And he was like, I don't get that. He's like, what, why are people like commenting on your food? I'm like, it's because we all eat and it looks yummy and they want some, you know? So my point is though, that it's, it's relatable. So don't think that you don't have an amazing life. Cause I think a lot of people look at what they see in social and they're like, well, my, my house doesn't look like that. And, or, you know, I don't have a boat or the fancy car or, you know, the cutesy kid or, or whatever you are making a judgment call because you see in your feed. Let me lean in, lean in and listen here for a second. Um, most people don't have that either. And what a lot of people show up and show on social media is the perf perfect side of their lives, not the messy side. 
the reality is most if most of us have messy kitchens, most of us don't have the, you know, the fancy house and the boat and the car. Be real with it because you're going to attract way more people to you with the real versus the like the made up perfection stuff than anything else. That's what's going to give you the edge over again, somebody that's actually just showcasing all the perfection in their life. Cause that's not, that's really not what the majority of people, that's not how the majority of people live. I guess it's, it's the best way of saying it. Amen to that one. And we all have bad hair days. I mean, I can vouch for that one. Like we all have, I have them more than most of you. Right. But no relatable. If you look at the top 10, you know, TV shows, a majority of those are reality TV shows. And that's why Gary V, you know, Gary V took his family's wine business from a few million a year to 60 million all through social media for free. He's like, so many of you worry about creating. Don't worry about create, just document. Just mm -hmm. document your day and people get fascinated with that. And all of a sudden, you know, and especially in the, in the network marketing profession, you know, people are watching you going, can I do what you do? Do I want to do what you do? Do I have time to do what you do? And do I want to do to my friends, family, and neighbors what you just did to me? So when you're showing, hey, look, the kids are driving me crazy. The house is a mess. I'm dropping them off in the school, you know, in the in the line. And I'm on my phone connecting with a few people. That is reality. And then people go, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it. And so it's relatable. You're being authentic. You're compressing time frames when it takes, uh, you know, go, the no like and trust factor happens so much faster. Because even when you're not exposing them, reaching out to them, going, hey, check out this video, look at this website, check out this before and after picture, whatever it may be, you're posting several times a week, right? You're being consistent, you're showing up daily. And so you're dripping on them, you're watering the seeds. And then when you post something about that amazing product or service, or you love the ability to generate extra income from your phone in the pickup line, waiting to get the kids from school, right? They've already had so many exposures. That's just one more going, okay, what is it? I remember one person reaching out to me, you know, years ago before I, you know, be became a coach and a trainer and they go, okay, Darren, I I'm, I'm done. And I'm like, what do you mean you're done? I am sick and tired of seeing you travel to all these awesome places, spending time with your family, working pool when I'm, you know, I'm at my cubicle, I'm at the office, you know, I hate my job. How do I do what you do? Yeah. Right. So it was that that was their very, I'm like, whoa, this stuff really works. Mm -hmm. And so, Kim, let's get into just a few tips. We, we have people that are watching this that are brand new. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't have, I don't really know what to do when it comes to social media, build my authority, build my brand, which by the way, your brand is just how you show up. It's who you are. It's, it's what makes people want to buy and do business with you. And so they, they have really, they're just getting started. Then we have some people that are watching this. They have, they have a pretty big following. And they already have a you know a foundation that's really strong. So let's start out with the people who are going. What do I do next? If I'm just getting started, what are a few little simple tips that you would recommend to start building that authority and, and my brand and start attracting people to me? Yeah, absolutely. I just want to clarify something real quick. Um, Darren said it, but I want to say it a little bit more pointedly. Um, your business is not your product. Okay. It is not, you know, whatever your network marketing company, the, you know, whether it's a service-based network marketing company or whether it's a product-based service, um, uh, company, you are the brand. So do not brand yourself to the company. The only thing that you ultimately, and this is, this is a good, um, message for whether you're just getting started. It's an incredibly powerful for you if you're just getting started, but it's also, powerful because I've seen a lot of people that are further down the road sometimes that are still, um, you know, intricately tied to the company's brand versus establishing their own personal brand. Um, so you are the brand. People do not, it's not about the product. They are, they're doing business. They're ultimately going to buy your product um, because of you, not because of the reputation that the brand has. I mean, you may leverage that down the road, but it's not what attracts people uh, initially. You are what is going to attract people initially. So if you're just starting out, um, I, I would personally pick one social media platform. If you don't do one uh, out the gate and you're trying to do them all, my prediction is you're going to struggle because it's hard. You know, it's hard to do all the things, uh, learn the platform, figure out how to create the content, do all the, you know, again, all the, all the stuff 
um, across multiple platforms. So my suggestion would be to pick one platform, start seeing success with that platform before you move to the second one. So first, that's my first strategy for you is pick one. The second one is get busy on that platform. Uh, you know, let's just say you should decide to, you could do Facebook or you could do Instagram. I'd probably start frankly with one of those uh, and, and, and move and expand out from there. But let's say you decide to go with Facebook. Um, Facebook um, is, uh, you know, they've got multiple formats for content. Um, pick one that you would like to show up with. You know, it could be video, meaning live video or stories, um, you know, what, whatever. I personally would recommend you go with video. And because, so I'll tell you why. Uh, video, even though it, you may be a little bit concerned about showing up on video, doesn't have to be you live on the video. You could be walking, taking a walk with your dogs and just, you know, showcasing the um, the walk. So there's lots of ways to not be uh, front facing if you're still, you know, if you're at that early stage and you're a little bit reluctant to do that. But video is the fastest path to the no like and trust factor. Um, why? Because people see you, they hear your voice, they get a sense for who you are, is the speediest way, the fastest way, whatever way you want to say it, to actually build in a connection with people. Um, lots of times people will be able to say in, one, in, in 30 seconds or less, which is bizarre that this happens so quickly, I kind of like that person. That person showed up really real in that moment. And I, I'm, what else have they got? They go check you out on your profile. They start paying attention. They maybe like you on your business page if you have one or your profile. And they, they again, it's that connection point. So pick, a, pick the platform, pick a format for your content and start creating content daily. Not every once in a while, you've got to show up consistently. Content is the, it's king and, uh, you know, it's one of those things, if you don't have the content, how are people going to ultimately connect with you? It's how, even after you've made the connection, it's how they stalk you. <laughs> it's how they get deeper into uh, whether they want to do anything with you going forward. So that's my my strategy for um, basically the three steps for just getting started. Just just get started. Hit the, hit the record button and just get started. Share simple things. Share life things. Share the messy. Share the vulnerable. Um, it's not about perfection. It's about showing up and knowing that you have something that someone else needs. Mm, so let's just recap. There were so many nuggets. I want to make sure that we get all of them. First of all, you talked about you are your brand, brand you, not your company. And I want all of you, you know, listening or watching wherever you are um, to understand this is good for your company as well. If, if you're posting all the things about your company and first of all, you're posting business or about your product or service every day, what would you do if you turn on the TV and it was nothing but commercials? You would turn it right off. And then when you post the name of your product, the name of your company, and I've done both. So I'm telling you from my experience and most of the people that I've worked with, if they Google the name of your product and your company, what's one of the first things that's going to pop up? Most of the time, it's not the positive things because these, these, the people that write articles and bloggers and advertisers, they're very creative and they know how to get the negative, uh, you know, that, that negative stuff to really pop up to the very top. And you don't even know someone was interested in what you do. They prejudged and they made a decision before ever getting all the information. So it's not good for the company and it's not good for you. Where if you're creating that curiosity, you're doing the right things online, you pique their interest, they reach out to you and go, what the heck are you drinking? How are you having so much time freedom? What is that service that you use that saved you that money you were talking about? Whatever it may be, that is what works. And when you say your brand, I mean, that's why it's really important to start thinking about now you're a business owner, right? You are representing, you are your brand. You take you with you everywhere you go. Really start to think about the things that you post. And I've had people that, and Kim, I'll give you this quick lesson recap and we'll, you know, then go to the people that have a little bit bigger, you know, base and give a couple tips for them. But I remember people reaching out to me going, hey, listen, I am ready to join you. I know about your products. I know about your company. I know about your compensation plan. And I go, wait a minute. Obviously, someone got you that information. You need to go back to that person. I don't take people from people. I, I treat people the way that I want to be treated. And they're like, no, no, no. Darren, this is a business. I want you to go look at that person's social media 
And you tell me if you would want to join a business with that person based off of the things that they're posting. And when I went and looked and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they posted that. that that's when I started really training my organization going, listen, you're either going to attract or repel people and you're going to attract what you are, repel what you're not. And be very, as long as you're aware of that, you're willing to suffer the consequences. You can keep posting. But remember, we're now an entrepreneur. You're representing you and we want to do the right things online. So I think that's that's definitely something important to remember. And then the three tips that you shared, number one was you said pick a platform, correct? Mm -hmm. Pick okay, a platform. So that, that platform, you know, where do most of your potential clients, where do they live? What's, is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it TikTok? Whatever. And then what was number two? Was that it was, post consistently? No, that was like, well, get busy creating the content, right? Okay. Uh, I think that's, that's important consistently, you know, and when it comes to really attracting people, going back to the um, whole message that you were just talking about, you're either attracting or repelling people. And, um, and I hear this quite frequently. So I just going to like pop this in real quick, because right now we're still talking to someone that's just getting started. And a lot of times when you're just getting started and you are putting things out there, um, you may get some pushback. You know, somebody may say, you know, something negative to you. And all of a sudden you just do a, you have a meltdown because, oh my gosh, that person doesn't like me. Or, oh my gosh, that person said something negative. You, um, what Darren just said, you either repel through what you have or you attract people through what you put out. And the key to this is to understand this. And please, please hear me when I say this. That person is not your person. OK, you are you attract uh, people to you through the vibe that you put out, the content that you put out, how you show up in the world. And you also, by virtue of that, can repel people. Those people need to go away. They do not need to be in your sphere. They drag you down. They're emotional baggage for you. Let them go and show up for the people who do connect with you. Emotional baggage. Yes, we don't we don't need that. And then I, I love what you said to, you know, do it messy. You're not going to be perfect, but done is better than perfect. And it's about progress and not perfection. All right. And so the people that already have a really good foundation, a good base, um, what any tips that you have for them when it comes to elevating their brand or building their authority, you know, online? Uh, boy, do I. <laughs> So one of the things that I see quite frequently um, is just lack of business um, structure, meaning, um, you know, you're out there, you're hustling on social media, you're doing the things, you've built a, a community that's pretty sizable, but the problem, enter the problem, is a lot of those people uh, are not seeing your content consistently or they're not on your email list um, because you haven't moved them from social media to a place that you own. So there's such, there's a term, it's called owned real estate. Things that you own in your business are things like your website, um, your email list, and then there's rented um, that places where we show up. Those are the social media places, right? We don't own our followers. We don't own our fans. Um, we have to move them to some place where we do own. And understanding you need business uh, structure in place, you need, I call it an authority page. An authority page is when somebody checks you out, they, they, they find you on social media, they go to your website, they are checking you out more you know, stalking you, whatever word you want to say, maybe they see a blog post that you wrote on social, they follow it to your website. Does your website in, in literally three seconds or less, tell them why they should be there and why they matter to you? Or you matter to them? Sorry, you matter to them. If it doesn't, you don't have an authority page. An authority page is something that, you know, people come to, it's, it's your website. It's not in, it's not a, a separate thing. It's your, it's your core, it's your home. You know, have you ever um, pulled up to a, you know, kind of a seedy looking business and you're like, I'm not sure if I'm going to go in there or not, because it kind of looks like a dive. Or have you pulled up to a business that just has amazing curb appeal and you have no hesitation, you roll out of that car and you go right in, right? So that's basically what you want your website to look like. You want curb appeal. You want to look good. You want them to know that that's the, the door they need to walk through. And if it doesn't, then you've got more of the CD look and the CD messaging and you could lose people in three seconds or less. So don't want that. So you need an authority page. You need a lead gen. Uh, you need to uh, have 
a, a place where people can opt in for something that's value based for them so that you can move them from social media to your email list. And that could be anything. It could be a video. It could be a checklist. It could be, you know, if you're if you're in the health and wellness space, for example, your network marketing company uh, sells health and wellness products. Don't make it about the, the company. Make it about 10 tips to, you know, or 10 biohacks for a younger looking skin or, you know, something like that. Something that you can seed your product in, but you don't lead off with it because the people are more likely to go for what matters to them. What matters to them is they want younger looking skin. And I think that's also going back to the authority page. You have to focus on that. What do people want? You know, again, I'll use the same uh, example, uh, the health and uh, fitness or health and wellness space. When you're trying to attract your person to you, you've got to look at it through the lens of what do they care about? Going back to statistically speaking, a lot of women, moms specifically, join network marketing companies. Why? Why? It's not necessarily because they want more money. They do. But why do they want the more money? They want the more money so they can put their kids in private schools or they want the more money so that they can stay home and be with their kids. Or So that's the messaging you lead with. You figure out what your person really wants. They may want the money. That's, that's absolutely true if you're trying to just sign them up into the company. But why do they want it? You know, uh, and that's the messaging you lead with. Uh, same with the freebie. What is it that they want that's going to give them value um, that's super, super important? So you need those things. And if you don't have them, you are potentially, um, one, you're losing people out the gate when they land on your page. Now, I, I want to break this into two categories, too. I know I'm, I'm passionate about this. So I'm, I'm sharing this uh, a lot, dumping a lot on you here. But a lot of people are looking at social media as the end all be all. And I just used an example of somebody's checking you out. They connect with you on social. They go to your website and they check you out. But what about all those people that are searching for you or the, the transformation or the, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're offering? If your messaging was clear, they're looking for you on, on the Google machine. And can they find you? So if I'm looking for younger looking skin, for example, and, I, and if you had your authority page set up and you were blogging about younger looking skin, the potential for me to find you in the Google machine without ever having a touch point with you in social media is really dang good if you have it set up. If you don't, though, how many of thousands of people are you missing on a daily basis that are looking for you? And you don't have to work so hard to, for them because they're already searching for the solution that you have. I'm just going to leave that right there for a second. Yeah, that's so. That. Oh, yeah. And, and, and if, as I share my journey, because, again, people see me now and they look and they go, wow, you know, I wish I could do what you do. And I'm like, you have no idea. Like, I knew nothing about I didn't know anything, but I knew enough to go find the people that had what I wanted. So when I was brand new, I'm like, OK, like taking Kim's advice today, let's go pick a platform. Let's make sure that my bio um, is attractive. You know, it, does it have the right things? Let's make sure that I'm posting consistently. Let's make sure that I'm posting what I want to attract. Am I being real? Am I being authentic? Am I doing the right things? Getting a little bit better every single day. Then as I grew, and I look at this, Kim, as if you're driving at night, the, the lights go to a certain point. You can see up to the stop sign ahead of you, and that's it. Once you get to that stop sign, you can see a little bit further. And so then once I got decent at posting consistently, creating decent content, just, you know, just simple content, then I started to elevate a little bit more. And then when you shared with me and started to teach, hey, look, you know, let's let's talk about your authority page and you help me with that. And let's create a freemium, a lead magnet, just something that gives people value and they want to give you their name, their email, whatever it is in, in you know, in exchange for that, that checklist, that whatever it is. So I started building a list, just spare time. And I learned that the hard way too, Kim, because, you know, Periscope came out and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. I'll just play around with it when I was so bad, but I did it every single day. I'd be in the parking lot waiting to get my kids from school. I just turn it on and talk to people and it blew up to like 40,000 people in just a few months. But the mistake that I made, that was rented land. When that went down, when Facebook Live came up, I'm like, oh, what a what a mistake. 
like I didn't capture those people's information where I could continue to stay in touch with those people. So these are all lessons. And, and, and as you progress, you learn different things. And then what I started to do, I'm like, look, I don't know how to blog. I don't know how to build a website. I don't know how to do any of these things. But I started taking a percentage of my income and investing it in me because I knew I take me every, everywhere that I go and my brand is going to attract people that, that, that want to work with me. And so I started investing a little bit. And most people, Kim, were not willing to do that. So when I was attracting people, not only in the United States, but as their company launched in different countries, I had people searching me out, go, look, I was, sh I was shopping for a sponsor and I want you to be that person. And I'm like, whoa, all the time, energy and effort, being consistent, being persistent and doing the things, investing into the brand and the authority, uh, you know, page and things like that, that one person that joined paid for that for the next five or 10 years. Like it was generating me thousands of dollars a month. Now, no, it doesn't happen every day. You know, yes, it did take time, but I'm sharing with you what's possible. So those are, those are great tips. All right. So then anything, anything else for the person that is looking to, you know, elevate their brand, build their authority, you know, they need to make sure they have their, and, and again, if you're just getting started, you do not want to go out and start building your own website, right? That's not the time. But as you progress and get to a certain point, then you need to start looking at, okay, what are the things I need to do to really take it to the next level? That's when you start implementing the things that she's talking about right now. So there's a time and season for all of these things, but we wanted to make sure that we gave value to every single person that's watching. And guess what? You may be brand new today, six months from now, you may be at the point going, hey, look, things are going so well, it's time for me to take the next step. So Kim, any other tips? Uh, well, I guess my last um, thing that I really want to focus in on, because I have such a heart for, for someone who's just getting started, is just get started. Uh, I mean, I know that sounds so simple, but I promise you, if you start showing up and just meet, keeping it real with people, talk to the one person that you know you can help if you have to visualize that one person. And more importantly than anything, talk like you talk in real life. Don't make it fancy. Don't try to make it perfect. Speak to people or the one person uh, exactly like you would if they were standing in front of you. And uh, I think if you can do that, you are going to win um, with attracting people to you. Such great advice. And as always, can you get a little bit better today than you were yesterday? That's That's yeah. been my whole goal. I was always so intimidated by mm -hmm. the people that I would go see speak on stage like a Kim Garst. But then I'm like, you know what? Can I get 1% better a day? And then I, I, I heard this, uh, this trainer and the speaker going, listen, do you realize if you just get 1% better today, just today, and then 1% better tomorrow, by the end of the year, it's compounded and you're 37 times better than you were. Not 37%, 37 times. And um, so, you know, done is better than perfect. Go out there and take some action. So Kim, thank you so much for sharing those awesome tips. Absolutely. So thankful that I was here, that you invited me and I was able to um, share something that hopefully somebody can run with. <laughs>